Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so, why don't you hit the little subscribe button for us? It does help us out. If you have a tendency of working on your own equipment, and I suggest you do, and one of those pieces of equipment is a Nintendo Switch, there are a few fragile points that you need to keep your mind on. One of them is the LCD connector. It's an extremely small plastic connector with a bail, and there's a lot of little pins in it. It can be damaged by heat, by too much pressure, pulling on the bail too hard, especially if you've got long fingernails, or even putting the, connect the ribbon back into the connector. If it goes in and it's bowed, you can actually grab the pins, and bend them down. And I've tried a few times under a microscope to straighten them out. It just never works. So in today's video, we're gonna replace an LCD connector that was an attempt of a replacement by an end user. It was a good attempt, but we needed to clean it up for them. So stick around and we'll show you how to get it done. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today on the bench, we have a motherboard from a standard Nintendo Switch. Um, it was brought to us because uh, the owner attempted a repair and you know they didn't do a bad job, um, but what happened was the LCD connector got damaged in the process. Uh, it's very easy to do. There's a lot of very small pins and if you get under there incorrectly and lift the bail, you can bend pins. Or when you're sliding the, the ribbon back in, if it's, if it's bowed and you push it in and you think it's right, you kind of shove it, you wind up bending the pins. Um, I've personally tried to bend back the pins and get them right. Um, and even under a microscope, you just can't do it. You can't get enough pressure in the right direction. Um, you can't get them back into the little gates. Um, and, and it just winds up being a mess. So anyway, uh, the part itself isn't very expensive. It's very fragile. Um, but I know it's hard to see. You know, you got a row of pins here that need soldered and you have a row of pins in the front that need soldered. Um, so it, it does take the right equipment. Uh, the other issue with, with this motherboard is that you have, you know, two more plastic connectors here and a plastic connector here. Um, and you have a plastic connector, and I can show you, under the, under the uh, memory module. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to set that aside for now. So you got a connector here. So normally whenever I work on these boards, you know, like if I'm changing, uh, you know, we've got our charge control chips and our charge director and um, your, v, uh, not VGA, but your um, video HDMI USB controller and a few other things. Um, you know, I'll use my heat gun and I'll just put it right on it and we'll heat up that part of the board. Um, and, and it usually works out fine. <clears throat> the problem is with this plastic, if we use that heat gun and start heat, trying to heat this, these solder joints, we're just going to melt the connectors. So, in this case, there's nothing plastic on the bottom of the board. There are a lot of parts um, that you have to be careful of. Uh, and, you know, you, it's easy to remove that connector with a soldering iron. You just get it hot and you basically melt it off. Um, and I think that's what the owner tried to do. They used a, a standard, you know, soldering iron tip <coughs> like this, like a chisel tip, and just came in and just desoldered and melted it and pushed it off. Now, hopefully, we don't have any damage to, to any of the traces. But what we can do is we can actually heat the bottom of the board and we can melt the solder and we can lift that off. Um, it doesn't look too horribly melted if he tried to put it back on with an iron. Um, and I don't really see any damage on the bottom. So I think this is going to be a salvageable board. Yeah, there's, I mean, all the components are here. 
or that should be there. There's nothing missing. Um, but the soldering doesn't look so good. And hopefully all those traces are there. So I had to change my, my setup a bit. Um, so we need a board holder. And here again, when you use a board, board holder, since you've got so many small parts you know, right at the edge of the board, you kind of have to look to where you're grabbing it. But I know I can grab this one basically between uh, this chip and this inductor because there's nothing on the bottom. I can grab it in this area and I can grab it right up in here because there's nothing right around that screw. Um, so let's just get this in the holder, position our feet correctly. Put a little tension on that spring. There we go. Now, since we have to heat that connector from underneath, obviously we have to come off the edge of the table. So I moved the microscope and uh, because we actually have to work from here. So um, I'm gonna get the microscope pulled back around and focused and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I moved the microscope stand to this side um, just because it wouldn't reach the whole way across the workbench. But over here, and you're also gonna have to forgive me, it's probably gonna shake a little bit being this close to my arm. But here uh, we can see our connector. Um, right now we're on the front part of that connector, right, you know, right in here. Um, and you can, I can see right away that these are not even lined up. That pin there should be on that pad or a pin should be on that pad. I don't even know if, how good it's lined up. Let's get to an edge and see. Um, yeah, actually it looks like it's, it's off quite a bit. It's off by a whole set of pins. But all the pins look okay. Well, I do see one thing. I'll use my pointer on the computer. If you can see this um, pad there, there might be damage. Uh, hopefully it's, it's still under there and just no solder. <clears throat> Let's take a quick look at the back side. Where are we at? Um, the back side actually looks... Nope, it's off by a pin. You can see that there's a, a pin off the whole way off to that edge. Um, and it looks like a couple of them aren't soldered right there. And you can see that empty pad on that side. Okay, so... It was a good attempt, actually. It's a, it was a very good attempt. Um, I mean, this is not the easiest thing to do. So I'm gonna readjust this microscope a little bit so we can see more of the whole thing. And I'll be right back. So, okay, so here's our whole connector. We can see here. Um, and <laughs> there's a little bit of Q-tip stuck in the one edge, but that's okay. Um, this connector is actually in really good shape, so I would like to salvage it if at all possible. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is get a little flux around this edge. The flux always helps everything flow, and although it's not 100% needed to remove this connector, it's still advised. Okay, let's see, get our hot tweezers. And I'm sorry the shot on this isn't gonna be very good, but basically we're just using, it's a five millimeter tip, I could probably use a wider one. We're just gonna come under here about an inch I'm gonna turn the airflow down a little bit because I don't want to knock anything off the bottom of the board. And I don't know if this got switched over to leaded solder or not, so we have the temperature up.
There we go. So we're on our silicone mat. And this, let it cool for a second. But it doesn't look like there's actually any damage to that connector. Yeah, we're gonna reuse it. And looking at the board under the microscope, we can see that all of our pads are still intact. So, so the last guy actually didn't do a too bad of a job. <clears throat> but let's make sure we got some leaded solder on there before we do anything. Put a little more flux. Hmm. So one pad doesn't seem to want to pick up solder. Is it still there? Maybe it is gone. No, it did. Okay, we're good. We still have this one pad. Okay. Clean the board, let's see what it looks like. This is just IPA that I clean with. Um, for a while it was hard to find, uh, in, you know, the good stuff. It was all being turned into hand sanitizer. But I would recommend getting 91% or better. Um, for a while I was using, all right, we still need a little bit of solder on a couple of those pins. Um, for a while I was, you know, forced to use stuff in the 70% range. And you kind of do what you got to do. Uh, you know, when the pande pandemic hit, it just wasn't available. Okay, so what I'm doing here, we'll clean our tip, put a little solder on it, set it aside. Um, what we're doing here is, since these pins are so small, um, it's very hard to use a uh, soldering iron to reinstall this. It's not impossible, but it's extremely hard. And even with a fine tip and a, and a very well-controlled soldering iron, um, you know, for example, you can see how fine the tip is on these tweezers. And in comparison, you know, when they come down here, they're giant. So it's, it's very hard to, to do with an iron. So we're going to actually put this on in reverse order. I'm going to clean the bottom of this connector a little bit. since it was probably burnt oh, uh, some. Um, burnt flux doesn't flow. So we gotta make sure that this is all cleaned up. Yeah, 
And if you have to clean one of these connectors when you're on it, you know, come from the middle and pull down on the pins, just real light. Um, you know, they're so fragile that if you pull hard, you're just, you're going to bend these pins out of place. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Okay. this board a little better. Now since we have leaded solder on, I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. It still needs to be up, um, but I'm going to turn it down to about 430. And we'll flip our connector the way it should be. Make it easier on us to put it on. And we'll clean our tweezers because we've got enough burnt flux on there that they're sticking. Okay. And basically all we're going to do is we're going to put some fresh flux on it. We're going to heat it from behind. And we'll set it back down. Okay. If I don't destroy the connector first. There we go. <coughs> Oh, one more thing. Um, after you get this connector back on, it will be full of flux inside um, as it melts. So it has to be clean. But once it's on, you can push the gate shut and you can just flood it with some IPA. Okay. Looks like we're lined up. Just give it a little push and reheat it.
to make sure all those pins are in place. We'll get check a second to cool, and we'll check it. Okay, we've cooled off a little bit. I've repositioned the microscope to come in a little closer. And if we look over here, now you can see the little arrow on the board has our, our um, I'm gonna use the pointer here, has our, there was a little arrow there, and that's our, our catch or our ground um, or our anchor point. So we're lined up that way. All of our pins are now soldered. You got one little blob there at the end, but it doesn't matter, it's pushed out. Let's flip it around and see what we can see. And look at that, same thing in the back. All of our pins are lined up and soldered down. Okay, we're good. Move that thing out of my way for a minute. So there you have it. That's the correct way of putting that connector back on a board. These are, you know, it, there's no easy way to do this. It takes the right equipment. Um, and while I have seen people successfully do it with very fine tip soldering irons and basic magnification, these are two and a half power readers. I don't normally wear readers when I read, but when working on this small stuff, it just makes life so much easier just to see where we're at. Um, and then the final thing is we want to make sure we didn't cause any damage where our clamp was, and we shouldn't because we, we verified earlier that there was nothing there. And then, you know, we heated this side of the board. Um, and we just want to make sure that none of these components moved or got knocked loose. And uh, we're, we're clean. There's no solder or anything obvious uh, missing part. So, there you have it. And since this wasn't a complete switch when it was sent to me, I'm going to go ahead and button this up. I'm going to clean the solder paste off for, uh, or not the thermal paste, sorry, not the solder paste. But I will clean up some of the solder paste. And um, I think we'll have a happy customer. Anyway, thanks for joining us on the channel. If you have any comments or questions or, you know, any, anything you might want to know about the equipment used or techniques, um, you know, please make a comment down below. I, I do respond to everything. Um, but I do appreciate you joining us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks.